Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can make the central panel section of your Boeing 737 overhead panel. Yes, I know. You already have made yourself comfy with a coke and awaiting another relaxing panel building video, but sometimes a project becomes challenging right from the beginning. And in this case, this is the width of this panel section. Here it is, fresh from uh, my laser cutter. By the way, this is the biggest piece of acrylic I have ever cut on my laser or on my CNC. And when I now tried to hold it on here, then it is a little bit too wide. Maybe this is because this panel section here has come a little bit too much to um, the left side here, but really a little, little bit here. There is no way to correct this now. And I think I will uh, sand down a little bit here from uh, both sides. And then this should make this panel fit here. After the panels are sanded down to the right size, I installed two big on-off switches. and three on of on switches. Two black push buttons. An eight position rotary switch. And I bought two 12 volt demos, which I opened to use the electronic components. When the top layer of the panel is ready, I usually make my backlighting layer. And this I make from this 3mm HDF board. But you can see this problem, it has divided into two parts. And this wasn't planned. The connection was somewhere here and it was too small to hold. I should have known this earlier, but okay, now I'm seeing it. So what have I done? This lower part has already four holes, so it will hold behind uh, the lower part of the central panel. But the upper part only uh, came with two holes that I have planned. Now I have added two additional holes, so uh, it can be held under this. But I think you know it, the holes aren't here in the panel. And now I have to drill additional holes into these layers. I have sent it away from the sides, so I don't think I can put it into my CNC and let the CNC do the work. The lining wouldn't come out right. I will disassemble some parts here and I will lay the finished upper back lighting panel here on there, screw it to the bottom panel and then use the two holes in this board here as alignment for the drill and I then will drill new holes here on my drill press and I think this won't damage the panel too much. The backlighting panel is held in place with 15 mm hex standoffs. Then five annunciators will be needed.
the wires on the dimmers were very stiff and so I changed them to some more flexible ones. I replaced the original cables by three new cables here between the dimmer and the potentiometer and with these new wires I will be able to place it somewhere here on top of the following backlighting panel to be able to connect the controlled LED power onto it. I used some parts of the original dimmer case to hold the electronics. So here is the backside of the overhead, how it's finished until now and I want to present you my idea for the upcoming backlighting. I have connected the backlighting just rough here. The output of the dimmer is connected to the backlighting of the center panel and the bus panel here. And this is just uh, for testing if this will work. You know, I'm planning most of the parts of the cockpit to be modular and so every section of the overhead panel here. I have installed all these D-sub plugs here so I have just to pull the plug and can disassemble the panel here and so has to be the backlighting. And I want to connect these uh, small uh, power connectors here to every backlighting of every panel section of the overhead. And then there is this one cable coming of the output of the dimmer and this will lead to a central point somewhere here. And this cable will be split up again to opposite connectors of this type and these will lead to every connector of every panel. And so when I have to disassemble one of the panel sections here, I just have to pull the d -sub connector and the plug of the backlighting, loosen some screws and then I can disassemble the panel and remove it from the overhead frame. But now I first have to order these plugs here and this isn't too interesting for you to, uh, waiting until these plugs arrive and so you know the theory behind this, we will test if this would work and then let's go on. The 12 volt power is now connected to the dimmer and the dimmer is connected to the backlighting of the center panel and the bus panel here. And now when I turn this on, you can see the backlighting coming on and getting brighter when I turn it clockwise. So this is working. So the power stuff is finished and now let's have a look to the program. I have opened ProSim system and displays here on the left side of the screen and already um, opened MobiFlight connector. In the background I have running prepared. In MobiFlight I have declared some outputs here. You can see this from the 
51 to D66 and also some inputs 52 up to 64. You can see these here in the settings on the MobiFlight modules. There is my Arduino D, which is the only Arduino I have connected for this purpose here. And from 51 up to 66, there are all the LEDs and buttons that I'm using here on this display. If you want to know how to do this exactly, how to configure switches in MobiFlight and ProSim, I have dedicated videos for this and you can watch this where I go into every step of this in detail. Just for you to know how to find um, the corresponding values here in ProSim, you go to config again and configuration, combine config, and all the values you need will be here under the Michelangelo's tab. There are lots of values here and again, it's um, probably the best method to search for it. For example, the laboratory uh, smoke annunciator here, I'm typing in smoke and you can see it is reducing them. And by the way, this is the only one which can be found under the pneumatic indication here. And here you can see you have the laboratory smoke which I already have assigned an offset to. So just to have another example, uh, for example, when we want to find the attend button here, then you type in attend. And here under Michelangelo's, we find the switch here. I have uh, assigned the attend pushed value. And we also find the indicator here, which is the blue one, which I have assigned to. Now I click here on run in MobiFlight and now there should be a connection between the hardware MobiFlight ProSim and the simulator. So let's test some of the functions here now. We start with the annunciators and to test these we just click onto them. The smoke annunciator, it's, it's lighting up. The two off annunciators, left and right not armed annunciator, there it is. And the call annunciator isn't lighting up. I think this isn't here the correct value then that is called when I'm clicking here onto it. When you know how to test it, you can write it down again into the comment section, just as you have done this on other videos here. But there is another method, I think, when we push the attend button now and there you can see it is blinking here and when we click it again yes it goes off so the attend button seems to work but i will show you right at the moment another method to verify this let's check the other switches here the supply switch to normal and alternate again. You can see the switch has moved. Now the exhaust switch, normal alternative, and the no smoking switch here. I think there aren't any smoking permissions uh, in planes uh, now these times, but it's just fun to use another switch here. So on is working, no auto and off. There it is. And the fastened seat belts signs off, auto, on, working. So now let's have a look for another method to check these push buttons here. And for this, I go to the Michelangelo's category here in ProSim and scroll down and search for the attend button. There it is. You can see the attend. It is off. And when I push the button, it switches to pushed. Now I have released it. And I push it again. You can see it switches to pushed and off again. And now the same with a ground call button. 
there it is, it is off. And I push it and it turns to pushed and off again. So everything is working. The panel is installed, programmed and ready to use. And the best of all, now I have seen that the backlighting is dimmable and can be controlled from the correct knob here. Now I have to spend a little bit more time to uh, find a place to install all the Arduinos and connect all the backlighting cables to the uh, control. But then other panels will follow and uh, can be connected to the backlighting directly when they are installed. And if you want to build your own panel at home, then you can find all the needed files for cutout and engrave your panel for download from the member section of my website. I also have updated my connection sheet so you can look up all the offsets I have used and to which pins of the Arduino I have connected them. Only a few sections of the lower overhead are missing now and if you don't want to miss these upcoming videos then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any new release. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.